Oh, it was great to hear Hogan get booed, wasn't it? I'm John Ritham with the Retro Review of WCW Nitro from December 4th, 1995. We're a few weeks away from Starcade 1995, and Hogan won't be part of WCW vs. New Japan, because Hogan's going to go film a movie, and then come back for the uncensored uh, 96 match, the Alliance to End Hulkamania Doomsday Cage match. Oh, fucking dear. So, there was also the overarching story of could Luger get Sting to his side? Would Sting become the vigilante? Not for about another year. And could Randy Savage overcome all the injuries he's had and all the beatdowns he's suffered and defend his WCW championship successfully? To answer that last question, yes. Phoenix, Arizona um, is the host, for, host city for this show. That poor dog of Mongos, that poor goddamn dog. Uh, Bobby Heenan is trying to entice the dog with some treats that are in this bag with a weasel tail hanging out of it. I think it was a Ruffles bag. He calls them weasel wafers. Why did they make Bobby Heenan do this stuff? Uh, commentary mentions Bischoff uh, specifically says, uh, Hogan, the Giant, and Ric Flair are on, are on probation. If anything bad happens, they are fucking done. They're suspended. There will be repercussions. Harlem Heat with Sister Sherry uh, defending the Tag Team Championships against the American Males, American Males, American Males. The song is in your head too, isn't it? Scotty Riggs and Marcus Don't Call Me Buff Bagwell because he was buff, he wasn't quite the stuff, and by 2001 the fans had had enough, and especially Vince McMahon had had enough. Um, at first the pacing wasn't that bad, however this quickly broke down. Rob Parker is courting uh, Sister Sherry, has a gift. With the ring, they're engaged. They're going to be married. It's going to be a big, happy-go-lucky thing. Sherry, goddamn, Sherry looked good still at this point. Harlem Heat are frustrated. They're jaw-jacking with the fans. I think AC Green was one of the, uh, you know, athlete. Um, I, God, I can't, I can't even remember, you know, really like what he was mostly known for. I know the name, but he was there, and Harlem Heat's jaw-jacking with um, him and Booker's just like getting all upset at him. Like, oh, we're going to get a match here. We're going to get the American Males winning the Tag Team Championships. Nope, we just get uh, Harlem Hangover and Bagwell gets pinned 1, 2, 3. We then get Mean Gene interviewing Luger and Sting about Star K95, Sting's friendship with Luger. And Sting says, I'm going to come for you the same way I come for everybody else. Gross. Well, whatever floats your boat. Luger tried to say that he will win the championship and then face Sting at Starcade. But promos did um, not really suit Lex. They, they really fucking didn't. He was better as a heel, I'll say that much. Now we get Sting versus Kurosawa, the future of Manabu Nakanishi. It was quick, say that much, and um, didn't hold, you know, didn't know much water for New Japan doing all that well at um, at Starcade 95, did it? And Scorpion Deathlock gets the win. And then we have a Starcade 95 plug. I will be retro reviewing that in a couple weeks. And then we get Scott Flash Norton versus the Giant. Cool atomic drop spot from Scott Norton, but later a choke slam one, two, three. And then Mean Gene interviews Ric Flair and Charles Barkley. Charles Barkley got a terrible reaction in Phoenix. And if you know anything about his career, well, the reaction still wasn't as bad as his goddamn golf swing. Sweet Christ. Uh, this was fine, I guess. Savage versus Luger with Jimmy Hart, WCW title match. Could Savage overcome all the injuries, like being choke slammed on the floor, <coughs> the concrete floor, by the Giant? Could we see, could we possibly see uh, Lex Luger as WCW champion again? Not quite yet. It would actually be uh, just under two years before that would happen for five goddamn days. Um, and Luger had beaten down uh, Savage's arm and targeted Halloween Havoc, uh, World War III, and stuff like that. So Savage turned the tables by targeting Luger's arm, and it was pretty good psychology. And Savage was clearly calling this because Luger, outside of his U.S. title run and maybe a couple matches when he was WCW champion in 91 to early 92, really wasn't all that good. Um, Savage crashes in a barricade. Luger takes over for a bit, and he keeps favoring his arm. Turnbuckle pad gets exposed because Jimmy Hart takes that off. And Lex gets hit into it, but then the ref bump, ref tumbles outside. Jimmy Hart uh, gets pulled into the ring by Randy Savage here after a sky elbow. Here comes um, here comes Ric Flair, loaded punch. And Hogan, who's on probation, by the way, gets Flair back in the ring when he's on the stage. And he ends up stopping the referee from counting down Savage. But since he touched an official, that's going to factor into repercussions later. I think next week is when he gets suspended. And then he accidentally clocks Sting, and then back from break, they're having a bit of an argument. Savage is like, I told you the Lex was bad. And Sting says, why is it every week you have to down the total package? Phrasing Sting, my God, phrasing. And then Hogan says to Sting, hey, we've got a tag match next week against Arn and Flair. Please, for the love of God, um, keep Luger out of our business. I will do that for you, Hulk. And that's it. So anyway, agree, disagree with what I said. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rutland. I'll see you soon.